Hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment and today we're going to be talking about the bolt carrier group for an AR-15. Uh, just got some thoughts on it just to show you guys a couple things about it that you may or may not know and honestly why I call it the heart and soul of any AR-15 that the bolt carrier group does need to be a quality component. If we're going to be putting money into an AR-15 build we should definitely prioritize the bolt carrier group and the barrel, but chiefly today we're just gonna be looking at the bolt carrier group. What parts uh, d does it consist of and why is it so important? So here we got a couple examples to check out. Um, these first three are AR-15 bolt carrier groups utilizing the standard internal piston or what we just kind of call direct impingement with a gas key on there. Um, this one is actually from the PWS AR-10, and it's, a, it's their piston system. This one's kind of unusual um, for a piston system that this much is actually part of the carrier or attached to the carrier here. Um, but we have also some different finishes going on. This one is a phosphated uh, aero precision bolt carrier group. It is chrome lined on the inside of the carrier itself. Um, then we move into this one's a nickel boron, so this one's gonna be pretty easy to clean, although nickel boron personally is not my favorite finish that you could possibly go with. This one's just gonna be hard chromed, um, just kind of how the original M16 and AR-10 got started. Um, and then the PWS 308 bolt, um, this one is gonna be nitride. So nitride, is basically going to be kind of a shiny black finish. It is pretty rugged, pretty durable. Um, going to the mill spec, we're looking at something like this that's phosphated. So that's going to be like a parkerized finish. Um, you can see that one's a little dirty, but you can see this BCM right here. And that's the chrome lining on the inside of the carrier that we're talking about. And the rest of it is kind of that dark gray, really matte black gray kind of look. And it really just kind of needs a coat of oil all the time. This one is my favorite. Um, this type of bolt carrier group, the chrome lining, that's almost about two times harder than the steel that it's, it's lined onto. And the phosphate, as long as you keep it kind of a very light coat of oil in it all the time, you don't have to worry about rust too bad with that. Nitride, um, probably going to be just fine with nitride. That's also a really good way to go or hard chrome. Um, but... Nickel boron, not as big of a fan. If it's not done right, it can actually start flaking over time. So let's get down to the actual components. So first we have um, all the components here are gonna be just like field stripping it just to do a basic cleaning on it. So right here, um, we actually have the bolt carrier itself. And on top, we've got the gas key, which is this guy. That's where the gas tube goes in right there and pumps the gases into the carrier, expanding against the gas rings and the bolt tail and actually making this thing run. Um, the gas key is secured by these two fasteners on top and typically you will or should see them staked just like that on each side, just to ensure that they're not gonna back out or come loose. Honestly, there's no need to ever mess with it, um, provided these aren't coming loose or nothing breaks up here, a fastener breaks off or something like that. As long as everything's running fine, um, no need to take this apart or mess with this any further. Um, on a phosphated, as per the mill spec, bolt carrier group, you're going to see a chrome lining on the inside right here. And we can actually kind of see it in there, the gas ring run that's getting started right about there. So that's where that's all gonna happen. Um, moving on, we've got the firing pin. On an AR-15, the firing pin is a free-floated firing pin. So we can hear that. And that just simply means that the firing pin is not, uh, doesn't have a spring, a return spring or anything like that. So that's why when we chamber around, um, the primer is going to get a little dent on it just from the inertia of the firing pin coming forward. So we always want to chamber an AR-15 in a safe direction on basically anything with a free floating firing pin, which you should be doing anyway, but just know if could be a potential there if you have super sensitive or uh, something's wrong with your primers. Uh, before we get to the bolt, we got the bolt cam. So this actually 
goes like that, of course, in the bolt, and it's gonna go through this bolt cam track inside the carrier right there. And it's gonna dictate the orientation of the bolt as everything's happening. Then we have the firing pin retaining pin, um, and that's simply just keeping the firing pin in there. And then we move on to the bolt itself. And the bolt itself, uh, it's gonna have an ejector right here, so that's physically ejecting the cartridge out. Then we have the extractor, which we're going to get into more detail on these parts. And then we have the gas rings, which a much needed video is going to be talking about the myth of needing to stagger gas rings. Um, but that'll be a subject for a future video. And essentially what's happening is these gas rings, just like a piston in your engine block in your car, um, the bolt is compressed in and when gas is pumped through here it initiates that actual kind of piston concept to expand the bolt the cam track is moving as it's happening and then the whole thing starts to come back and actually cycle let's get into some more detail about the bolt so now we see the bolt actually disassembled um, into all of its parts so this starting out with the bolt body this happens to be a rock river um, something that we do want to see or look for um, from a manufacturer. This one's a BCM. Um, but you're going to see markings like this. HP for a high pressure test. And then magnet particle inspected uh, just to ensure there's no fractures or anything weird going on the inside of the metal. Um, that's the high pressure test. That's going to be an individual test where they load a purposely over pressure round just to fire one round to ensure the bolt survives it. Um, and then they do that check just to make sure it's fine on the back end. Some companies will individually test every single bolt, such as BCM. Other companies might do batch testing where out of maybe 100 bolts, they will individually test maybe five of them. And if they all pass, then the whole batch gets to go through. I'm not too worried about Rock River in terms of being a bad quality bolt carrier group or just in this case a bolt. But this is what it looks like. We can see... The recess right there for the ejector and the ejector spring. I'm going to be putting this together for a separate video. Um, we do see on the bolt tail where the gas rings are going to go. And we have the ejector itself, which if I can pick it up, you can see it's kind of got that notch. And that's really just for the roll pin that's going to hold the ejector in place. The ejector spring, and then we got the roll pin for the ejector. In completed form, we'd be looking at this guy right there. That's your roll pin that holds in the actual ejector itself. Next, we have the extractor. Um, of course, we want a quality extractor as well, just making sure this isn't going to break or snap. Um, if it's not a quality extractor or it's a metal injection molded, it's not up to snuff or not hardened right, I'll usually see it break right about there and then you've lost extraction. Sometimes they'll break right here. Um, so having a quality extractor is gonna be important just like the rest of it. Um, we do have the pin that actually holds in the extractor. Um, pretty simple enough to take that out, um, just using either your firing pin retaining pin or a punch and just pushing through. Um, next we do have the extract, extractor spring itself. Um, this one happens to be a Colt. We can see by the copper color there. We are looking for a five coil spring. And let me see if I can display it a little better. Um, trying to get a five coil spring all in all is kind of the modern standard. You'll see older guns, maybe if you've got like a Colt SP01, something like that. Um, you're just gonna have a spring. That would generally be that. Next thing we can do to help out the extractor spring is provide this insert. So that'll go in the inside of that spring just to give it rigidity and kind of help. And then something we definitely want to do, um, especially if you got an SBR or AR pistol and you're dealing with a barrel, this one's a 10 and a half. Um, you're dealing with a really short barrel, something like that. About 14 and a half inches and below, we do want to add this donut on here which is going to help provide a just a firm extraction and we're going to know we have something in there when we can't can't even move the extractor with your thumb it's pretty stiff um, and just to see what it would look like when it's all assembled and in there 
we can see we got the spring, we got the insert, and then we got the donut around the spring. And that's gonna be something we're gonna to wanna to do, um, especially on those shorter barreled uh, pistols or SBRs. Definitely gonna to wanna to make sure we got that just to help with the extraction process. The gas springs themselves that we see here, um, they're gonna be, all three of them just kinda of lined up just like that. The gas rings themselves, depending on the build, again, if we're going a shorter barrel, 10 and a half, 11 and a half, some people, absolute worst case scenario, seven and a half inch barrel, 5.56, five, um, that is pretty tough on the guns, pretty tough on these parts. And we're definitely going to be interested in changing out these gas rings, um, probably every, se every several thousand rounds at least. We'd also want to be checking out our bolt cam just to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not missing the opportunity to change that out. So those are all the components that make up the bolt carrier group. Um, let's look at a couple more things. So something else we're going to look at in detail is the actual staking of these fasteners. Um, we want the company or the manufacturer to do a proper job using proper screws staking it properly so we just never have to worry about the carrier and gas key assembly so i've got these in kind of not ideal good better and best um, and pretty much these two are good to go it's these two i've got concerns about we just want to look at the quality of these screws um, and the quality of the stake job this is definitely passable it's just more a matter of will this hold up with a, a long-term use or a high firing schedule? Is that going to work out for us? Then we start seeing the stake job will start to get a little better on this one. Um, these screws, kind of an interesting pattern on these on these hex bits here. It almost like it's off center, but at least the stake job does look good to go, or at least better. Um, moving into this one's an arrow precision. We see quality screws that are concentric. We do see also a nice stake job going on with this. So that is definitely satisfactory. And then lastly, just using the BCM um, looks very similar to the Aero Precision. They kind of stake these pretty deep. Um, so on this one, I would have absolutely no concerns about either of these fasteners walking out over time. Something else that we definitely want to check out is we can see on the bottom overall profile here. These are going to be M16 or full auto carriers is what you'll see that referred to. And then we see this where it's got this milled out. And that was pretty big in the 90s um, doing your AR-15 enhanced carrier where even if you did have a fully automatic lower or a burst lower or something with an auto sear, um, that's actually what trips it. So by the lack of this, um, that's just, you know, back in the 90s, companies were trying to sell AR-15s and also, you know, work with the ATF or try to prove to them, hey, we're not making machine guns. And that's kind of a, a whole separate incident there. Uh, another video. Something that we don't want to see after we're shooting it or if we're having jams and we're not sure what's going on, we're having problems, it's not gassed enough. Um, this one, I think, is just oil that got a little smudge. But if you see carbon kind of shooting out of the sides, and this one hasn't been fired in a while, so I'd be interested to see if this thing would actually have problems because that can show you some gas leakage if you start seeing carbon kind of shooting out between the carrier and the gas key. I definitely don't think this bolt carrier would be a good candidate for uh, an SBR or an AR pistol, something with a short barrel that's really going to be, you know, putting these parts in high demand and really taxing these parts. Um, if this thing's already not leaking, I, I don't think the prospects on this one would last too long, especially in a, in a rifle like or an SBR or a pistol like that. All right, one of the last things we can do um, is check the gas ring. So with everything fully cleaned out, everything good to go and reassembled, we just want to put the bolt just like that. I'm going to try it again. All right, one last thing I'll leave you guys with is we could test um, where we're at on our gas rings and kind of an easy field test. It's not 100% um, precision or perfect, but it's definitely a good field indicator of what's going on. 
that we have the bulk carrier group fully cleaned, put some lubrication on the gas rings and everything. And then once it's back together, we extend the bolt and then we see if it can stand on its own weight without smushing in just like that. Um, if, if we were to try to set it on the bolt and it cannot hold up its own weight, that's going to give us a pretty good indicator that it's probably time to change out the gas ring. So hopefully this video was kind of informative or helpful and thanks for watching.